uh, a year ago, uh, the police burst into his home um, and uh, carted him to prison, uh, where he remained until the 12th of March, and uh, charges with uh, crimes that uh, were not very clear. That's the, the an understatement of the day, I, uh, I, I can say. Um, he and, and another colleague of him is, is not alone. Um, we have to uh, recognize that, uh, yeah, Turkey now holds, uh, maybe it's not a world record, but it's nearly to the world like, uh, record for locking up journalists, uh, more than 100 reporters, uh, journalists behind bars. And um, um, I think it's uh, very important that uh, we give Mr. Sik uh, the um, uh, opportunity uh, to explain to the European Parliament, because um, we are talking about a, 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 a country who is candidate to, uh, to enter in the European Union and, and to fulfill the criteria of Copenhagen, uh, what uh, is uh, happening uh, in his country, what is exactly more uh, precisely his case, and uh, how uh, we have to evaluate and analyze uh, the uh, situation in, 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 in in, in Turkey on uh, the freedom of expression, uh, the freedom of, uh, uh, of press. So I'm very pleased that uh, with the help of uh, Alexander Lambsdorff, we could organize this uh, uh, hearing uh, today. And I, I give immediately the floor to Mr. Ahmed uh, Sik, who shall speak in his native language, mother tongue, uh, uh, translated to uh, your other languages. Well, I've been invited to this hearing to discuss my case, but I had already prepared a speech, and I believe by the end of my speech, I will have answered all your questions. Tayyip Erdogan, the Prime Minister of Turkey, addressed the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg on the 13th of April 2011. He was asked the question, and here is his answer. I'm not the one who's having the books collected. There must be a reason behind all these documents so that the judiciary is asking for immediate measures. Let me give you an example. It is uh, a crime to prepare a bomb, and it is a crime to use the uh, materials that are used in building a bomb. If there is such an intelligence, then wouldn't it be normal for uh, the police forces to collect those materials? Well, this answer that Mr. Erdogan gave was about a book that I had written. It is very interesting that in the past, he was also convicted due to uh, a poem uh, that he had read. But Mr. Erdogan later on became the prime minister and he resembled the books uh, to bombs and uh, try to defend the situation by calling me and a lot of journalists, a lot of colleagues, terrorists. It is um, a very unfortunate um, event. It's been more than a year, and my book uh, that was resembled to a bomb was downloaded by tens of thousands of people from the internet. Then my book was published uh, by 125 authors. It carries now the names of these 125 authors. After 376 year, uh, days of detention, I'm here in front of you. I'm trying to enjoy freedom, and I'm here addressing you. Of course, uh, I have to thank you for your efforts as well, because you helped me. Uh, in my efforts. I hope those people who called me a terrorist and who called my book a bomb have some shame today. There are many lies being told to us in Turkey about 
uh, advanced democracy, about uh, coming to terms with uh, the coup d'etats of the past. But these are all lies because today, according to the uh, professional uh, journalist organizations in Turkey, there are 102 journalists in jail today. And according to the international NGOs, there are 50 to 80 journalists that are being kept behind bars. I was one of those people as well. There are many journalists who are kept behind bars, there, but there are many other journalists that are not behind bars but cannot freely express their opinions because they lose their jobs if they are to criticize uh, the AKP government or the Gulen community. Banu Güven, Ruşen Çakır, Nuaim Mertz, Çidem Anat are some of these names. So I suggest uh, that you do not believe these lies that you're being told. The f problem of the freedom of expression became much more visible thanks to the detention of the journalists. I was one of those ex examples. Nedim Şener was also one of those examples. It also helped people see uh, that the judiciary was no longer under control as well as the police as well. They went uh, beyond their limits. Maybe I spent a year in prison, but I believe that this was a fortunate thing because it helped people see what is going on. In my case and in many other cases, um, we are being tried because of our journalistic activities. And the prosecutors asked us many questions about our new sources rather than uh, other questions. And we were asked questions about our articles and about our books. It's the confidentiality of the news sources uh, should be guaranteed by law, but it is being eliminated as well. It is being um, violated. And uh, the journalists are forced to silence. And silence is a, a weapon used by totalitarian regimes. So I would like to ask you if these rules of totalitarian regimes uh, are in place in Turkey. Can we call it a democracy or can we uh, call it an empire of fear? The prisons in Turkey are full of uh, captives who are called terrorists in line with the anti-terror law. There are, for example, 500, even more than 500 uh, students who were involved in peaceful demonstrations. So it is very normal for this regime uh, to blame us of being terrorists. Let me make a quotation. To the new face of uh, the totalitarian regime faces every aspect of life. The hypocrisy and the lies of the system are now in every part of our life. Individuals are being humiliated. People are deprived of information and knowledge. The deprivation of people from the freedom of expression is considered to be the advanced form of freedom. This is a police state that has no principles, but they pretend to be respectful to human rights and people do not have to live with this lie." End of quotation. Well, this quotation is very similar to uh, the cruelty that we're going through in Turkey, but I am not the author of, uh, the, of these lines, of this paragraph, and this country is not Turkey that is being mentioned here. Uh, this was an article written by Vaclav Havel, and Vaclav Havel uh, was um, imprisoned in 1978 in Czechoslovakia due to this article. But still in 2012, today in Turkey, we are experiencing the same uh, problems and the same limitations. Anyone 
who opposes to the party in power or to the actors in power power, be it journalists, be it authors, be it publishers or academics, they are being kept under detention um, on the assumption or on the claim that they're terrorists. This leads to many violation of rights. And the rulings of the courts in Turkey are very much debated. They're found to be very controversial as well. We've never experienced such an era before. Many journalists in Turkey are being kept in detention or uh, are imprisoned due to the books they've written, the news stories they made, or uh, the uh, videos they shot. For example, Ragıp Zarakolu. Um, just made an opening speech in the cocktail reception of uh, the policy of the politics academy. Bushra Ersan uh, is detained due to teaching a lesson, a course on gender equality. Muharrem Erbe is um, imprisoned because he is an advocate of human rights. And there are even villagers who are kept under detention because uh, they were against a dam project that would, co that would cause uh, a natural destruction in their uh, village. So this is the general mentality in the Turkish judiciary. But in the case of hunting, for example, uh, the court ruling it did not point to any terrorist organization. This I find very interesting. So there are many legal problems caused by the justice system in Turkey. So every day we have new investigations, we have new cases, and I find all these to be very absurd. AKP and the unofficial partner of the AKP government, the Gulen community, uh, calls everyone to live under the threat of being called a terrorist. And the Gulen community wants to carry out political, uh, a policy of political revenge on uh, the actors of the past. Every day is now an extraordinary day, and it requires a lot of courage to find uh, lawfulness with law. We know that the judiciary in Turkey was never fully independent. And the judiciary in Turkey is one of the uh, forces that is behind the lack of freedom of expression and thought in Turkey. To be more exact, I can say that uh, the Turkish Penal Code and the anti-terror law are two pieces of legislation that lead to all these cases and investigations. There are also courts with special authorities um, that uh, deal with these cases and that further reinforce this injustice. The judges and the prosecutors in Turkey could not fully internalize the European uh, legal norms, and it is impossible for them to solve the problems of the justice system in Turkey with the laws in place. The uh, anti-terror law can call anyone a terrorist who is just um, in opposition to the ideas of the government. The state security courts were abolished in Turkey, but now we have the courts with special authorities, which uh, basically have uh, the same authorities with uh, those of the state security courts. And these uh, courts with special authorities are the main actor behind the violation rulings uh, at the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, 
therefore I have to highlight the need to remove these courts with special authorities. Let me repeat one of my statements in my defense. Agenecon and the other investigations that stemmed from the Agenecon investigation uh, do not try to overcome uh, the main problem in Turkey, which is the state within the states. They aim at eliminating everyone that is being targeted by the Gulen community. This is an opportunity for Turkey to come to terms with the state within the state, but Turkey is not making use of this opportunity. Even worse, this, uh, these cases are given as examples of advanced democracy and the fight to make the judiciary and the government more civilian. However, it, this investigation does not look into the state within the state or the coup d'etats of, of the past. Nobody questions the anonymous killings of the past. Nobody questions those people who went missing under custody. Uh, only uh, the Gulen community tries to eliminate its um, political opponents. The Gulen community tries to show itself as a charitable organization. However, in spite of it, they feel uh, the need to organize further, both in uh, the police and in the army. There are certain questions about this Gulen community that I would like to find answers to. For example, I want to know how many people there are in the Gulen community. Uh, who are these people? How do they f raise funding? And why do they have this urge to organize further in the state bureaucracy? I was blamed of being a part of the mentality that I was against. And I was targeted by this community. I want to find the answer to this as well. So we are aware of everything. We know that uh, there is an effort to build a regime uh, that is oppressive. We know that dictatorships, dictatorships do not come into being uh, coincidentally. Therefore, we have to remind um, people once again that Havel, for example, became the president in 1989. And he said, I want to make the impossible possible. I want to uh, combine ethics with politics. Therefore, I believe uh, that at the end uh, of this road, we will uh, arrive at a better life that we are struggling for. Well, that is my that is all I had to say, but I would like to share with you an anecdote as well that will give you a better idea of what is going on in Turkey. Um, I was kept in detention for more than a year, you know, and then I wanted to visit my family and uh, the parents of my wife as well. On the way back uh, from the from the airport, I, t I took a I took a cab, and the cab driver had some funky uh, loudspeakers in the, in the cab. He wanted to talk about driving, and I know nothing about driving, to be honest. I don't drive, I don't have a car, so I couldn't answer his questions either. But he asked me what I was doing. And I said, I'm a journalist. And he said, just be careful so that they don't send you to prison. So this is a good summary of what is going on in Turkey, I think. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sik. I open immediately the floor for, for all the uh, colleagues who want to intervene. Alexander, first of all, and then uh, uh, Sarah. First of all, uh, yeah, I, have, I have your names. I have your names. Well, first of all, um, 24. 
Um, first of all, let, let me say how happy we are that you are out of prison and how grateful we are that such a short time after being released from prison, uh, you have come here to share your experiences with us and also your political assessments. Um, we believe that the pressure and the visibility that were generated concerning your case and, and the case of the other three journalists who were arrested together with you um, has indeed served as a, as a beam of light, really, onto the problem of what for our political family is particularly important, that is the freedom of expression, freedom of thought, freedom of the media, and so on. Um, so we are very grateful to you for having come, and we are also very grateful that Martin Schulz, the president of this parliament, will greet you officially at the opening of the plenary session this afternoon. I believe it shows that not only for our political group, but also for the parliament as an institution, the values that I just mentioned are absolutely essential um, and we, that we all stand behind that. There are two um, questions that I would like to ask you. One, you spoke about the Gulen community. Uh, now, the Gulen community is a bit of a mysterious entity. The leader lives in Philadelphia in the United States, and his adherents claim that he is advocating tolerance and, and, and peace, love, and harmony, essentially, in an Islamic way. Now, these are not things that we would be opposed to. Um, what do you believe are their real intentions? Um, that's my first question. The second question, and I believe that's important for colleagues to understand, Ahmed Sheikh was arrested under the pretense of being a member of a Genekon. Uh, a Genekon is something related to the deep state in Turkey, but he and his work helped to uncover the existence of the deep state in Turkey. So it was completely mind-boggling, really, to see this kind of accusation. Um, what precisely are the charges against you now, exactly? And are you still in court? Do you still face a prison sentence? So is the cab driver right to warn you, after all? Um, uh, Sarah Litford. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. I, I subscribe to everything that um, Alexander has said, and we, um, uh, we very much salute um, your um, sticking to your principles, your courage, and, and um, empathize, empathize with you for the experience, uh, uh, dreadful experience you've gone through, and very grateful you're here. Um, my question was the same as Alexander's first one about the Gulen movement. Um, I, I'm not nearly as knowledgeable about Turkey as, as he and other colleagues, but I have, you know, uh, seen reference to them and heard, um, in fact, there was a, a UK radio program sometime last year, um, quite disturbed about this movement. And as Alexander said, no problem if it's a benign, charitable kind of movement. Quite another thing if it's a cult, and one that uh, seeks to um, create networks which could undermine the integrity of state authorities and the police and so on. I have to say I have similar uh, views about the Freemasons, and I am actually keep meaning to get back to that subject because in my own country, the UK, uh, it is still not a matter of public record where the police officers, for instance, are members of the Freemasons. And I don't, I'm unhappy about that because I'm worried about networks of collusion which could become networks of corruption. Anyway, uh, so that's the question. That's the only, my only question. My, only re my other remark um, would be to, uh, to note you know, this, this abuse of anti-terror laws because uh, I'm interested in the answer to the question about the precise charges, but the broad context is indeed the abuse of anti-terror laws, which we very much take up in the report for, for plenary. And I mean, you know, we know that Europe and the United States and the West have not set a good example uh, uh, on that in the last decade of extending the uh, scope of anti-terror laws. Um, not saying done it the same way as Turkey, but um, 
you know, we need to be aware of the Turkish experience. Uh, Stanimir? Stanimir, yes? Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Mr. Shuk. What you said is interesting, surprising, concerning, in one and same time. I have three quick, but I think important questions. Do you think being quite well acquainted with the whole Ergenekon affair, that it might be a anti-Kemalist operation of the government with the tools of the special services, which is final goal might be the neutralization of all the principles of the secularistic state as Turkey had been built in the early 90, uh, 20s by Kemal Ataturk. Secondly, what is the reaction of other key figures in your society to these events, including intellectuals, writers, not just journalists or students? For example, is there a for, uh, worded and demonstrated position of Orhan Pamuk towards the, these events in, in your country? And the most difficult question, what might be the probable final goal of the white party in your country to build up what type of society, authoritarian, totalitarian, uh, to rule the country with no competition from anybody? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Hans, Hans van Baalen. I would like to ask Mr. Sik, is it government policy, that means policy of the ruling party, and Prime Minister Erdogan to stifle free journalism? Or is it more, let me say, um, a policy of the bureaucracy, and especially the prosecutor general and, and the courts? And what specifically can we in the European Parliament do to support you? Thank you. Uh, Andrew, Andrew Duff. Yes. Um, I respect the fierceness with which you've expressed your feelings about just what is going on at the moment in Turkey. But I think it's also fair to put the other side of the case, which is that the AKP government has tackled the military in a, in, in a, in a direct way, uh, and uh, no previous uh, Kemalist uh, government has uh, dared to d uh, do so. The uh, position of the uh, military, uh, the formal position of the uh, military, is still to protect the state from the uh, c c uh, citizen, but the uh, constitutional reform process that is now in train is, is seeking to uh, reverse that, and that's quite correct. And the U European Parliament and the ALDI group is absolutely uh, de determined to support the progressive reformists in Turkey, which include the, uh, the AKP government, as it seeks to transform the state. And a second comment is that there are, as we know, tensions between Fed Tula Gulen and the AKP. Uh, to what do you attribute such tension? It is not, I think, correct to portray the AKP as being in the pockets of Gulen. Or, or, or vice versa. Uh, Marietje Schaken. 
Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I too believe it is great that we're having this discussion. Uh, I think it is brave that you continue to speak out. Um, I'm right here. <laughs> um, and I wanted to ask to what extent this, in your opinion, is a matter of, of speech, free speech, freedom of the press, etc., or whether it extends to the rule of law in Turkey, the separation of powers, and broader and uh, effectively essential and existential issues for uh, a well-functioning uh, state and democracy. Uh, I thought your quote on uh, comparing the materials of a book to the materials of a bomb by a prime minister quite striking uh, in our efforts to raise our concerns with uh, limitations to all kinds of freedom in Turkey. I've often received formal replies from the Turkish government that uh, this, there's absolutely a separation of powers so that it is difficult for the government to speak about cases that are still under the judiciary. And such comments from a political leader would suggest uh, otherwise. What is your opinion about this? Could you confirm whether you are uh, acquitted of what you had been accused of or is the trial still pending and are you merely free from your pre-trial detention? Um, I also was curious whether there are any plans to, uh, uh, to make available or to publish uh, the, uh, the book in English. Um, and lastly, I would like to ask what you believe the role of the EU is, and perhaps more specifically this parliament. Uh, the liberal group, uh, our political group, has, has spoken out vocally uh, for the freedoms of people in Turkey, all kinds of freedoms, but speech is very close to our hearts, also on the internet. Um, and we're also still very supportive of the accession process of Turkey to the EU, as we believe that this uh, is a process along which we can help um, pressure and also share best practices and build capacity for the real guarantees of freedoms for people in Turkey. What are your thoughts and how can, how can Europe be of help for these uh, fundamental values which we believe should be shared and guaranteed for Turkish people and, and people in Europe alike? Uh, thank you, Metin. Metin Kazak. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, je, je voudrais aussi me rallier. <coughs> thank you very much. I, too, would like to say how pleased I am that Mr. Shekhov is now free. I would also like to support what Andrew Duff has said, namely, that uh, we have to look at uh, both sides of the problem. I would like uh, to know why Mr. Sheku uh, is convinced that his uh, problems come mainly from uh, that alliance uh, with the AKP party and the Fetagulen uh, community, given uh, the r recent divisive uh, divisions there have been or differences of opinion between the Gulen community and the AKP party. Uh, why do you think that that is at the origin of your difficulties? Uh, that's my first question. And second, what are your views on the constitutional reform uh, and the legal package which is now under discussion in Turkey? Do you think that this will have a positive impact? which is uh, the goal on uh, fundamental freedoms and freedom of the press and freedom of expression. Do you think that uh, Turkish civil society, uh, together with the party in power, do they th you think that they want to uh, bring about this reform and that the reform will then have tangible positive results? Uh, there has been some progress in the past few years. Many taboos have been lifted the um, Kurdish issue, for instance, and many other issues. So don't you think that Turkish society is uh, improving in that sense? So, uh, Mr. Sheik, I, I can give you the floor for all these remarks and questions and to, uh, to react uh, uh, on them. Thank you, 
If I've missed any questions, uh, please try to tell me. I'm trying to respond all the questions. I took my notes. I hope I haven't missed out on anything. Well, I am as curious as you are about the Gulen community. I think also that they are very mysterious, and I'm one of the persons who is trying to investigate into this mystery, and that's why I found myself in prison. I uh, was always uh, said that uh, I wasn't in prison because I wrote a book or I was a journalist. But there is another question I have to ask you. Would I have been put into prison if I hadn't written that book? Now, the AK party is a uh, is in power. It is a single party in power, but it has an invisible partner, a ghost partner in coalition, and that's the Gulen Foundation. They are like phantoms. They are everywhere, but they are nowhere. And they are the intimidators. They are the sources of fear in the society because they are in control of the police. I'm not talking about this in rough words. I am a person who has always advocated the facts that I know. If Gulen community had been doing good things, I would have praised them. But there are still questions that need answers. Why would an NGO want to organize itself in two of the most important bodies in the government? I need answers to those questions. I never defined myself as a chemist. And uh, I have never been a part of uh, this formal bureaucratic system. But I want you to know that this newly introduced system is also as uh, bureaucratic as the old one. And I was asked a question, is Turkey going to be a state of Sharia? Sharia, the Islamic law, will never reign in Turkey. I don't believe this. Even my mother thinks that they are bringing Islamic law and order to Turkey, and I always argued against that. But they have brought something into Turkey. It is not exactly Islamic law, and I can't really define what it is, but there is something that you have to comply with. You either comply with that thing, which is not exactly Sharia, or you find yourself in prison. We first have to define what this thing is in order to uh, uh, find out what's going on. Please don't think that I'm a pro chemist Please don't think uh, that I am a person advocating the status quo. I'm not. But there is something that is uh, uh, quite weird. Uh, the Gulen community always argues uh, some points that we all agree about. Tolerance, peace, and social welfare. But what happens is that when you have those important organizations in the state uh, ruled by only one single mentality, then you run into a problem because you don't know whether they will run those organizations according to their own mentality or according to the laws. Then there is a problem, because if those organizations are run according to their mentality, then there won't be any rule of law. Yes, I was charged by being a member of uh, the Ergenekon organization. Uh, they knocked on my door, and the police officers showed me the charges, and the charges are the, f 
that I was charged with being a member of the Argonacon terrorist organization and by inciting violence. And when I was taken before the public prosecutor a few days later, the prosecutor also told me my charges being a member of uh, uh, the Argonacon uh, organization. And I was interviewed by Zekeria Öz, the same prosecutor who was later on uh, charged with being a part of the conspiracy against us. He showed me a few documents, and some of those documents uh, uh, were uh, obtained from the computer system of ODA TV. And we have forensic scientific reports clearly proving that all of these documents were fabricated and planted. I have never seen those people that I was uh, um, I was blamed to be in conspiracy with, and uh, I told them so that I had never seen or known these people, and. Uh, uh, the evidence they had in court against me were 271 news reports, one book that I could not yet complete, and again, another book that uh, is uh, written about uh, how Hanefi Avji was arrested as a result of the conspiracy by Fethullah Gülen Foundation and some telephone conversations. The telephone conversations were about politics were about and were about books. Uh, well, if I had uh, uh, told you what I had told you to I had told to you to a friend on the phone in Turkey I would be arrested and charged by being a member of terrorist organization almost all of the journalists are charged with what they have said on the telephone in Turkey well, I was asked why I was acquitted. No, I wasn't acquitted. I was only released from pretrial detention. The trial is still pending, and I think it will take a couple of years before uh, the uh, trial ends. And I can clearly tell you that I'm sure I will be sentenced by that same court. They will rule that I have aided and abetted Argenekon organization. Because if they don't rule that, then they have to find out who conspired against me and who caused me to go to that prison. The government itself is also subject to such conspiracy. And uh, there was a question about uh, the interstate tension. There is tension in Turkey. There are two components in government in Turkey. And I am sure that a lot of people in Turkey are aware of the fact that there are two ruling parties in Turkey. One is the Gulen community, the other one is the AK party. And one is out of control. It's a phantom organization. But on the other hand, we also have a political party, which is legitimate, which is visible. And this is a fight between the phantom organization and the visible uh, organization. And recently, a newspaper started to publish the Streffer documents. I'm not sure how uh, uh, reliable those documents are, but they have the, say, uh, the following facts about our arrest. Uh, Fethullah Gulen wants 150 
seats in the parliament from AK party and this causes attention and we were arrested as a result of this conflict between the Gulen Foundation. I don't think this is a very reliable piece of news because 150 seats is too much. But when I was arrested, I said uh, this is something that is like a hot potato. This is what I meant when I said that this is a hot potato. Because if we could have discussed this invisible organization beforehand, we wouldn't be discussing this here. This is the phantom organization, which I call the hot potato. And there is also the crisis of the uh, National Intelligence Agency and they are also at stake because what they are charged with is a part of uh, a fight against the Prime Minister's efforts to bring a peaceful solution to the Kurdish issue. What is at stake here and what they are charged with is the solution to the Kurdish issue. And they are trying to tell the Prime Minister that he's not authorized to negotiate peace with the Kurds. Well, if the Gulen community is only a charitable uh, NGO with peaceful aims. Why then are they involved in Turkey's uh, Kurdish issue? I think you should find the answer to that question like I'm trying to find the answer to that question. The answer to that question lies uh, uh, in the lobbies of uh, some political organizations, maybe. I'm a journalist. I'm only trying to find answers to the questions in my mind. And I'm doing that up in the open. I'm not trying to conceal anything, but I was pictured, portrayed as such a criminal that uh, everything that I have done so far were completely disregarded. Isn't this a very good indicator why people are taken as a target. I was taken as a target because of the book I wrote about Gulen Foundation. I uh, support their charitable work. I'm not against their charitable and tolerant and peaceful activities. But I also want to know why they try to organize themselves in the police force and in the judiciary. I want to know why they're not transparent. The anti-terror law and uh, if it's exploited. Well, the anti-terror law itself is a problem. It is problematic because uh, if Turkey is trying to align its uh, laws with EU, this anti-terror law should not exist in Turkey. Everybody can be labeled a terrorist at any time. This is why we have scholars in prison. This is why we have villagers protesting against dams in prison. Uh, all these laws should be abolished. They are telling you that the state security courts are abolished. That's a lie. The only thing they did is was to remove the military member of the jury. Otherwise, uh, the uh, sp special authorized courts, the courts with special authorities are no different than the state security courts. And I know that you're going to discuss this tomorrow. And please make sure that you mention in that report that these 
special courts with special authorities are also uh, exploiting the laws. They are now trying to reform some of the laws. Uh, I th believe that the minister of justice and the ministry have a more reformist approach but there are also people who resist to that and they use the powers of the media to oppose it and uh, I may sound like a paranoid to you but I'm not believe me uh, if you check the media supporting the Gulen community just make a reading of the last month and you will understand that they are trying to uh, uh, put uh, a barrier against all these reforms. The, they are advocating that terrorists will be released out of prison because of these reforms. Uh, they they are running a chain of uh, investigations causing the innocent and the guilty to be completely confused and this is now going to be something that will be tried in the future by the judiciary and uh, I'm afraid that this process will be subject to investigations and to trials in the future and uh, they, this future process will also cause victimizations and you will probably hear them here too. This is a process that Turkey has been going through for decades and I'm afraid it will continue for many more. The social opposition in Turkey, well, I don't think that the society looks very brilliant because people are completely intimidated and people are now afraid to, to uh, state anything or to express their thoughts or to demonstrate. This uh, conversation with the cab driver is a good uh, indicator and uh, uh, a 55-year-old carpenter was hired to do some repairs in my lawyer's apartment and he said to my lawyer, uh, Sir, I'm very careful when I'm speaking on the phone. I advise you to also exercise caution. Well, this is the words of a carpenter, a simple person. There is an oppression system in Turkey. Uh, I have been a journalist for 20 years, and this has been continuing, and it has been increasing, and the worst times of oppression has been happening in the last few years. People are being arrested in groups, sometimes 35 journalists are arrested at the same time because of this or that conspiracy and people lose their jobs over what they write and what they say. This is not uh, the problem created by Gulen community itself. It's a problem of the entire government government block and uh, a, fr a journalist colleague said that because of something that uh, he discussed he was threatened on the phone uh, somebody was speaking uh, uh, on the uh, a program on TV and he was tr threatened by another person who said, I'm going to report you to the same prosecutors and have you arrested. I don't know what Orhan Pamuk thinks. Uh, well, he is a man who likes his solitude. He doesn't go on the streets very often, but I wish I could see him demonstrate. 
and uh, there is always a joke that we tell uh, people uh, who were awarded the Nobel Prize discuss and those Nobel laureates uh, uh, are discussing in a meeting and the only person who is missing there is Orhan Pamuk because he doesn't like to appear in meetings. Uh, well, I am not concerned that uh, AK Party will bring uh, to Turkey any Islamic law or anything. AK Party is a party that advocates some economic interests and the only thing they do is uh, uh, try to uh, make their supporters uh, gain a bigger share of uh, the economic pie. Uh, well, it, this is a party that's no different than any other political party in the past. I'm very happy to be in Brussels. You know why? Because I can freely sit in a cafe on the sidewalk and uh, drink coffee or beer. You can't do that in uh, Istanbul anymore. Uh, you are not able to do it in any other city uh, outside of Istanbul either. This is something that is being limited day by day. I think that uh, the, this government should also know to tolerate and to learn to respect people's uh, lives and their choices of lives. Freedom of expression and press in Turkey. I discussed this earlier, but the laws, the judges, the public prosecutors, and the politicians who approve of these uh, uh, limitations uh, cause this problem. Ahmet Shuk and Nedim Şener, the two of us made this issue visible, and I'm proud of what I've done. I am uh, willing to go back to prison as long as I can help uh, to a solution to this problem. This problem, thanks to us, became more visible. The EP's pressures, suggestions, and advice will be helpful, and I'm sure that the pro-reformists in the government uh, will uh, try to make use of your support, but I'm not very optimistic. I hope I'm wrong. There are two sides to the coin. There are good things that are done, and there are also bad things. Because of uh, my job, I've always worked on uh, bad news, so I'm usually a pessimistic person. I know that when you have a glass, it can be half full or half uh, empty, uh, but I want uh, to have people a fairer share of everything. That's why I'll continue to see the empty side of the glass. Thank you. The other side of the glass. <laughs> Uh, so thank you very uh, much, Mr. Uh, Sik, and thank you also for all these uh, comments you've made uh, and for all this uh, uh, information that uh, you have given us. And uh, you, you have to know that uh, uh, we, as the uh, Alliance for Liberal and Democrats in, in Europe, we are always at the side of, of, of those individuals uh, who want to continue their fight for a maximum of opening uh, of uh, freedom of expression and uh, of freedom of press in any country uh, of the world and especially uh, in Europe and around Europe. Thank you very much for your presence. Thank you.